Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the executive director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. The purpose of our organization is reinventing the world in a way that works for everybody and what we call for the highest good of all. And what that means is we are creating open source blueprints and providing a comprehensive solution that addresses all of the pressing issues of humanity of our generation and generations to come simultaneously. Food, housing, energy, education, recreation, social architecture, fulfilled living, for-profit and non-profit, uh, intentional and highest good business creation, as well as global stewardship and uh, a co cooperative, global cooperative and collaborative hub for organizing a movement of self-sufficient and self-sustainable and self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world. So this is our video blog update number 30, weekly video blog update number 30, covering our accomplishments for September 16, 2013. Format of these blogs, I'm going to go through a bullet point of every bullet point list of everything that we accomplished, and then I'll go into detail um, <clears throat> on some of the things that are happening behind the scenes in relation to those in the last seven days and where we're going over the next week. So let's jump right into it. Oh, and as always, if you are interested in uh, the links to all the details that we're talking about, we've put some new content up, things like that. We'll, we always have a companion written blog that goes along with this that includes images and screenshots and things like that from all the 3D work that we're doing, links to all the new open source content web pages that we have that has videos and you know infinite amounts of information all that stuff can be found in the YouTube video description and uh, the first link there will take you to the written blog that goes along with this uh, with this video blog. So without further ado, let me jump right into it. This last week, uh, we updated all of the top level page links on our website, which means that all of the top level pages, the main links for things like highest good of all, open source, teacher demonstration, community villages and cities, those kinds of things. We updated those links so they have descriptions now, lengthy and detailed descriptions when you just mouse over the link so that people navigating our site can have an easier experience without having to navigate away from the page that they're on to be able to understand what it is that we're talking about because our project is ridiculously comprehensive. The concept of reinventing the world is not a small thing. To provide a comprehensive solution that connects every aspect of the human living experience together and creates sustainable solutions that incorporates all that stuff is a pretty big deal. So uh, we've updated all of our top level page links on all the different pages to make our website a little bit easier to navigate and to understand without jumping from page to page because people said that they get lost in our website. Uh, we also got the food forest page up, which I'll talk in detail about what that means. We've got the wall of Pini number two, planting and harvesting details are now done on the website. The Earthbag Village 3D is continuing to progress thanks to the amazing work of Devin Porter. Uh, he's now got windows into that 3D model, and I'll include a picture in the, at least one picture, in the written blog, as well as uh, he's got doors in there now. We're starting to put the whole village together around Tropical Atrium. We've got our showerhead research done, which seems like a small thing, but it's actually a big deal. This kind of stuff takes, God, I think it's probably 10, 15, maybe 20 hours just in showerhead research going through everything that's out there and we're going to create a whole page dedicated to that. Um, we're almost done. That is part of the bathroom and toilet dome research for everything necessary to create a sustainable uh, communal shower dome, earth village dome, earth bag dome, and then also a communal toilet dome. And so we're doing all the research on toilets and uh, you know toilet paper dispensers and all that kind of stuff. We're almost done with that and able to put that up on the website. Uh, we thought we were going to have that done a couple weeks ago, but it's just, you know, there's layers as we look at it and go, oh, we need more stuff. So Pod 2, which is the Straw Bale Village, is also progressing. Now what we're starting to do is we've got the whole thing in CAD, thanks to the uh, amazing work of Dave Wallen. And he's got the whole thing in CAD, and now we've realized that we need to put in some access, some additional access points to meet fire code. And so we've expanded that a little bit. Um, we've got the uh, the greenhouse details are now in, some of the central recreational space details are now in, and so that's progressing. And then the Sago Center duplicable city hub uh, is also progressing. We've got our sliding glass doors are now designed in 3D and have been put into the Sago Center, 
and uh, Rob Jerdy has also gotten the uh, pool, natural pool filtration and um, heating for the hot tub details are sketched out. So we've got to figure out, now that we've got the sliding glass doors in, that will allow us to design the external version of the natural swimming pool to a little bit more detail, which will help us to identify exactly how many gallons of water we're going to be pumping and filtering. And then we'll be able to take all of Rob's amazing work, which I'm going to post also. You'll see that in the written blog as well. Uh, we'll be able to take that to the next level and do the finalized plan for that, then be able to open source all that. So um, very exciting on all that stuff. And then also we got the Strategies of Being page complete. Have to dance. That Strategies of Being page is the work, if we were to add in all the research that we did for every transformational educational system currently in existence, because we researched all the major ones, Waldorf, Regio, Orf, um, Montessori, uh, um, the uh, multi-intelligences, Bloom's Taxonomy, um, Study Tech. We researched all of those. If we were to include that, because all of those went into the strategies of being, which is the strategies of great leaders, communicators, and teachers, if we were to add all that in, plus the research that we did in all the books and everything that we combined to create that, that page being completed uh, is probably 100 and something hours of work, may, way more than that, probably more like 150 hours of work. You know, and obviously all those pages for all those other education programs are already up. Just putting together the infrastructure of this page alone took over over 10, 12, 10 or 12 hours just to build the web page with the information that we already had, with the quotes and the images and all. It's turned out amazing. And so we're going to put that out to the public this week and get some feedback on that. And then uh, we'll update and continue to refine it. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go into the other details. And then last but not least, uh, we updated our methodology page, which is a detailed description of exactly how is it that we intend to reinvent the world that's quite a claim, and we're very serious, and that that is exactly the purpose of our organization, and we believe that it's possible to do within this generation, and how we believe that's possible, and maybe I'll go into depth on that now, and then I'll wrap back around and talk about the details of everything else. How we believe that's possible is by creating solution models that create additional solution creating models. That's what one community is all about. It's about demonstrating a solution model that is a comprehensive solution to all of the issues of humanity simultaneously. Food, energy, housing, education, those are the big ones. Business creation so that people can get themselves out of debt and setting, uh, helping people to establish themselves as self-sufficient and then built into the model is a model for actually sharing the model with other people so that it self-propagates. And so our methodology page is the page that describes in detail exactly how that works. The idea of providing something of huge value that most people today would consider to be significantly superior to the way that they're living right now, and then giving away the blueprints for how to duplicate it, identifying every component necessary to make it as easy as possible for people to duplicate everything that we do so that additional sustainable community models, sustainable village models, sustainable city models start to pop up and then collaborating with those organizations so that we can build the open source archive bigger and better, more comprehensive and faster together for the highest good of all. And so our methodology page goes into detail on exactly um, what that looks like, the goals of one community, how that works, and how our four-phase strategy of global transformation, what are the details behind that strategy? How exactly does it work? How do you, how do you market and share this idea to a large enough group of people that would be interested in it, get them to come and experience, participate in it, and then give them what's necessary to duplicate it? And that's, that's what we're all about is how do we demonstrate something that will be so amazing that people want to, to have for themselves and then teach them how to duplicate it anywhere in the world. That's our methodology. So <clears throat> that whole page has been redesigned, and uh, it's really beautiful. We recommend you check it out. If you go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash methodology, of course, if you want to check out the Food Forest page, go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash food forest, and uh, you can check out that page as well. Really amazing stuff. 
So let me go back into detail on that. So I'm speaking about the food forest. Well, actually, the top level page links, I think I already explained that. Uh, the food forest page. So the whole page is up now. It's got two amazing videos on there about what a food forest is showing seven years of food forest development in seven minutes. And then there's another video. It's about an hour and 20 minutes long that goes into the details of exactly how to create a food forest. And then you can see the list of all the plants that we will plant in all the different categories. And if you're not familiar with what a food forest is, it's as the name implies, a forest of food. And the idea with food forests is you create a complete ecosystem, complete ecosystem that supports itself. And so once the food forest becomes established, it will function on its own indefinitely. And it's providing all of this food. And then you can go in there and through proper stewardship, you can help to bring up the levels of food production. You can maintain that habitat or you can just let it do its own thing and just harvest the, the results of that. And it takes a long time to get one of these things set up and truly established, but once they're established, you would literally have to physically go in and remove it to get it to stop producing food. And so it is arguably uh, the most ethical, economical, and sustainable way of producing food available. It, it's mind-blowing. And so we've got that up now, <clears throat> and now Michael is doing all the research on every single one of the plants there so that you can see the details, a picture, a description, the planting guidelines, where do you order these plants from? Get your food forest started from, you know, started with. Where do you how do you plant them? And then your cultural considerations, some of the things that you can expect from those different plants uh, as they continue to mature. And then that food forest page, once we get all those plants up, then the infrastructure is in place. So as we grow the food forest, we'll continue to add the details of every single one of these plants and how they actually develop as part of our open source botanical garden model. So, which is onecommunityglobal.org forward slash botanical garden. And so the open source botanical garden model is a process of accession for all of the plants that come onto the property and then maintaining detailed notes and records of exactly how those different plants perform, where they came from, when we planted them, you know, whether or not we harvest seeds from them, what does well, what doesn't do well, and all that information is part of our open source uh, database that we are building. And so all this website infrastructure that we're putting together right now is the infrastructure so that we can plug that information in easier and easier and expand upon it. And then ultimately what we will do is create an individual complete page on each one of the plants that does really well, which will have videos and complete details on how to maintain that plant, how to plant it, and our experience of raising that plant as just one minute piece of our process of reinventing the world in a way that works for everybody. And, uh, and a big part of that is food for us. So we're super excited to have that plant up. And then if you want to see the details of what that plant looks like, go to the, um, to the written blog and check out Wallapini 2. So Wallapini 2 We've already got all the plants in. We've got a few that we might want to add because we've got 40 different, 44 different types of figs that we're growing in Wallapini 2. Uh, and so we're thinking that we're going to feature five or six. We're waiting to hear back from a partner, the partnership that we're forming to be able to provide all these amazing feeds, figs. And then we want to talk to him and see what he would recommend if we wanted to feature just five or six different figs. So, But the foundations of that page and the descriptions of uh, everything else is pretty much up there. And so a great example is you can see that there's 11 different apples of the 50 different apples that would be grown in that, that will be growing in that structure. We featured 11 of those. And then underneath you can see links to all the other ones and descriptions of all these other amazing apples. And if you want to dive into the world of mind-blowing, awesome food diversity, check out the Aquapini and the Wallapini planting and harvesting. Go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash highest good food and then click on the links for what will be growing. And you can see all of these different houses and what's going to be grown in each one with the complete plant descriptions that we'll be adding to the Food Forest page as well. And we just continue to add these plant descriptions because we have done hundreds of hours of research on that. And then our team is just adding them as quickly as we can to the website. So large-scale Aquapini is done. Wallapini 1 is done. Wallapini 2 now is done. Unless we want to add some of these other details, we might add a few more specific features in there. And now we're working on Wallapini 3, then Xenopini 1 and 2, and Food Forest. So coming along, very, very exciting. And so that's what that's where we're putting a lot of our energy right now is in that food 
forest research and then getting those those plants up and we make announcements every time we get a big chunk done so very cool um the earth bag village a little bit more detail in the earth bag village so the earth bag village we're almost completely done with materials with the exception of the tropical atrium and we've got uh, a lot of stuff that we need to do with tropical atrium as far as do we want to do glass or do we want to do plexiglass for the surface on that we've got some engin engineering stuff that we're still working on and we're looking for engineers to join our team right now that would like to become part of one community either move on to the property um, or just to consult for us and with us and to donate their time to creating open source blueprints for the world um, so because we don't have those details we haven't finished tropical atrium yet but the trop but the uh, the 3d the earth bag village uh, 3d is really really coming along thanks to the work of Devin Porter and so now and I'll, like I said I'll include a picture of this you can start to see the different domes taking place uh, forming around the tropical atrium and we're working out the layout details on that we'll be putting in the paths and working out the level of the ground because these are semi subterranean so they've been placed down into the ground as well um, for the heating and cooling benefits of doing that and so all that's developing now in 3D whereas before all we had was a tropical atrium and a couple domes out front now you can actually see the whole village starting to progress. So um, very, it's, it looks awesome and it's coming along. And so now that we've got the materials done and we've got all of our time and labor projections done for that, you know, the open source uh, instruction manual for the Earth Bag Village is really starting to come along. And then, you know, once we actually build the Earth Bag Village, we'll include videos and all kinds of other tools, tutorials, and resources and then we'll make hard numbers for everything. You know, so we are planning and planning and planning on top of planning so that we've got absolutely everything we can possibly imagine thought of for the whole Earth Bag Village. And then when we build it, we'll create hard numbers for that so that people know exactly what to expect. And people can take our open source blueprints right now and they're as accurate as they can be based on hundreds of hours of research. But once we actually order everything and we're always looking for new affiliations and new partners, and new resources to help bring consumer prices down, to make the whole process easier, to streamline the whole process. And so when we actually build it, we'll have the best of what we've been able to come up with as a complete team, and we'll just keep refining that over and over and over, making it easier and easier and easier. So this concept of reinventing the world is designed also to be an evolutionary process. You know, it evolves on its own with more people that cooperate, collaborate, and get involved with the highest good of all philosophy the open source mindset and can contribute to that. And then the more open source content that we create, the better we build the foundation, the better we build the infrastructure that other people then can evolve and expand upon and make even more beautiful and more amazing. And so that's the whole idea is we want to evolve the entire industry so these basics are covered and the people that are teaching about this kind of stuff, and the people that are really passionate about this kind of stuff, the people that want to invest in sustainable infrastructure can put their money in taking what we've designed and making it even more awesome and making it even better and even more beautiful, which will draw more attention to the industry as a whole because there'll be this, this constant participation of people creating and making it better and putting out more information and pictures and, hey, look at the home that I built and all this. And so that's what we're doing. So as soon as all this 3D stuff is done, then we'll make it all open source. Once the, once the files are complete, We'll put those all out there to the world and say, okay, here they are. Now you can take all these files. We put hundreds of hours into it, thousands if you look at the bigger picture into this. We give all that away for free. And now people can take that platform and evolve it in a thousand different directions. It's crazy exciting. So along with that, that's why we're doing all the showerhead research that I said that we've got done. So all that showerhead research is we realize that showers are pretty important. Um, high, high uh, low volume showers are uh, traditionally not the greatest showers, depending on what you're used to. And so we've done a ton of research and because we're gonna have these shower domes that will have several, five different showers in each one, we going to do a different shower head in each one, see which one ends up getting used the most. See if there's ones that people really gravitate towards. And so uh, we have an opportunity to share shower head experience like uh, I don't think anybody else that I'm aware of has can do that where it's like, hey, let's put together you know, 10 different, 10 public showers and then evaluate how people use them and test a whole village using these shower heads and see which ones we like and then see how they last. 
and do a review on that. And so we've done, that's why we spent so much time researching that. So we're doing this on everything. You know, when you build a comprehensive solution, the goal is to reinvent the world, we're setting it up in such a way that the idea is that everything that we do is an open source shared experience and constantly looked at from a research and development perspective and designed with a framework so that other people can plug into the research and development process and continue to evolve and contribute to it so that it gets better and better and better and contributes more and more to the industry. And so this is where we're putting our time and energy and why we're building so much infrastructure and why we're taking so much care to make sure that all our T's are crossed and all of our I's are, I's are dotted because the infrastructure that we're creating right now on our website is massive. The infrastructure that we're creating right now is such that we won't have to do this in the future and we can just start plugging in the resources and just make the uh, resource database better and better and better and then provide a foundation and an example for other organizations to be able to follow and plug their research and information into the database also and to create an even bigger open source archive. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So we're almost done with all of our research on the toilet shower domes. I thought we were done a couple weeks ago. But Renee, who's working on that, uh, said, nope, I've got a lot more work to do. And then we decided we were going to go crazy on the showerhead research. And so we put a ton of hours into that. And so hopefully that's coming up, uh, going to wrap up here. Maybe I'll do a new happy dance when that's done. But it's nothing like the amount of time that we put into the strategies of being page. So, um, and then pod two, I mentioned that that's the straw bale village. So the earth bag village is maximally affordable sustainability. The straw bale village is maximally sustainable, or sorry, maximally expandable, modulate and maximally expandable sustainability. And so as that, it's built as a double torus and what we're doing now is we've realized that we need to create access to it because it's a round village model and we need to create fire access points through that as well, which will allow us to drive golf carts in there and harvest from the uh, central forest area as well and there's a whole bunch of other benefits. So um, I'll post some pictures of that and that's the work of Dave Wallen is doing that work and so uh, coming along really cool it's neat to see that that moving forward as it is because Dave took that project on we didn't think we'd be tackling that possibly for months longer because we were so focused on the Earthbag Village and here Dave came along and said hey I want to do that and he jumped on it and he's just creating some amazing stuff so very very cool thank you Dave um, and then the Sago Center so the Sago Center duplicable city hub is meant to be a social and recreational center that saves massive amounts of money and resources by combining a lot of the spaces that most people would want in their individual homes into one giant, very beautiful and amazing building that costs a fraction of what it would cost to build kitchens for everybody and what it would cost to build you know, just big living rooms for everybody. Instead, we're building one awesome, beautiful Sago Center or City Center hub that will provide laundry for up to 300 people. They'll provide dining for 150 people at a time. They'll provide a recreational space for 100, 150 people. Really, really beautiful. And then the dome homes that we're building, those earth bag villages, which are maximally affordable, they only need to be a couple hundred square feet, you know, for our model. Now other people could put several of those together and, you know, you could build a 2,000 square foot house if you want to. But our organization, the idea is that we want to demonstrate more of like a dormitory style of living you know, or like a hotel room size living space and then put our resources into creating really beautiful public spaces as well as getaway spaces and then, you know, leaving the land or turning the land into a giant thriving food forest around us and creating habitat, regenerating the earth, demonstrating that we could create an oasis in the middle of pretty much anything and just this amazing, beautiful, thriving, abundant space that is super, super resource efficient it's super, super space efficient, and the Seiko Center City Hub is a big part of that. And so, in this last week, we've got the uh, we've got the sliding glass doors designed and put in there, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're building this stuff in 3D from scratch, it's a really big deal. You know, and we're working on the dormer windows, which we should have done this week too. And so, when you see the pictures of these, it's amazing to see what it is. And a ton of research had to go into that as well. Like, hey, what sliding glass doors are going to be in here? And how do you build that into a geodesic dome? What do you need to remove? How does that get built so we can build it in 3D? Now that's in there, we can start doing sun studies and looking at some more details that we've looked at <clears throat> with a lot of detail before we chose the window placement. But now we can actually start doing studies on that kind of stuff and looking at it in even more detail than that. 
And so it's, uh, it's really neat to see that coming along. And then uh, also what's important about that was we needed to put the sliding glass doors in place because Rob Jurdy is, has, is working on our natural pool design and he needs to know exactly where that pool, we had a pool design that didn't account for the sliding glass door where it was. We had to redesign the library and we had to redesign the public bathrooms uh, there so that uh, they would meet code. And when we did that, that moved the sliding glass door and changed our design for the natural swimming pool regeneration zone, which is out front. So you got a regeneration zone out front, then you got an indoor outdoor swimming pool that's on the inside. And the idea here is to create this amazing uh, recreational space. It's just, you know, opulent, really. It's mind blowing, beautiful, but super affordable compared to what it would cost if you were to put similar type of stuff in a house. And then by doing that, you know, people are comfortable and happy to live in smaller living spaces because they've got this amazing dining hall that they get to come to with an industrial sized kitchen and collaborating and cooperating on food production because it saves tons of resources and tons of waste in the food department as well. Collaborating and cooperating on laundry because it saves tons of resources and then having one awesome gray water processing system that drains out into swales and helps us to grow bamboo that we can then use to build, you know, pod four with. So, comprehensive solution. 15 years of thought and planning went into this whole thing. I've been working on this now full time for almost going on three years come October. And um, it's an immense amount of work. and We're excited to be getting it done. So many big things are happening and getting done and uh, checking off these huge action items. And uh, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing how comprehensive and how detailed it is and how much work's gone into it because we have such a huge team working on so many different pieces. So, um, so now that we've got the sliding glass doors in, now we can figure out what the new configuration of the natural pool is going to be, that regeneration zone. And then we're going to talk to our botanist, who's the guy that's also really focusing on the food forest. We'll plan out exactly what we're going to plant in that regeneration zone as well. So maybe it can produce some food, but more importantly, so we can cover it so we don't have water loss. And then that regeneration zone is also going to be water storage for all the water catchment off of the Sago Center because we're recycling all of our water and capturing as much water as we can. And so it'll go into there and then we'll build a storage space for additional storage of that water and having a really amazing filtration and cleansing process so it's all safe for the Natchez swimming pool that's actually inside the Sago Center in the central area. So, wow. Uh, so yeah, and then along with that, I did a little hap dance. Whew. Strategies of being the foundations of amazing teachers, leaders, and communicators page is done for the open source and free shared education for life program which is a community-based education program that can operate as a charter school or a home school and will be open sourcing the whole licensing process for that as well because we really want to put education in the hands of people that would like to lead education programs a community base and by community I don't mean an intentional community I mean your community your surrounding community if a bunch of parents wanted to get together and run an education program, we like to provide the infrastructure for that. And so, you know, we've been working on this education program for a couple of years. It is really coming along. And now we're starting to move into the process of creating the actual lesson plans. And the way that we uh, have decided that we're going to do that is we're creating the lesson plans like a mind map, where the concept is, is that you have a central idea. Say your idea is health. And then off of that, you have all of your primary primary subjects that we teach within the context of health. So if you said health is your primary and your center of your mind map, the different little uh, extensions off of that would be science and math and social studies. And then what you would do is within the, the general term of health, you teach each one of those lessons. So you would say, okay, within the, the health would be the theme, and now we're going to study math. And we're going to teach math with a health-based theme. So you might learn how to take our heart rate and what that means, how to calculate that out, or how to, you know, do different exercises and calculate out what that what that would be. Or uh, like with social studies or something like that, we'd say, well, what did it mean to have the first president who was disabled, and what was happening at that time in history? You know, to have a president that was in a wheelchair. What did that mean? And so now you're tying in health to social studies, right? And so into science, same thing. You could look at. ATP cycles and things like that. You can look at the chemical reactions within the body. And so what we want to do is we want to create lesson plans that are based on this that could be used then in a traditional educational environment, in a homeschooling environment because it's all open source. And more importantly, it creates a framework 
that then other people could tie in additional lesson plans on the website. So as we build this open source resource, people from all over the world could say, hey, this would be a great idea. You should teach this in relation to that. And we can create a database so it's a go-to place like the Khan Academy is for amazing lesson plans. Only this, instead of, instead of having digital reproductions of it, instead it's an idea source. And then we'll add videos of us actually teaching these lesson plans and our experience of how it works within the one community model so people can, can mine that for ideas and like everything else, so they can build on top of it. And in doing this, we want to create a resource that will put uh, free education in the hands of anybody with a computer around the world and build with and work in concert with an organization like the Khan Academy that's putting out such amazing free information out there and, and along the same lines, but we're going to add to that. We've got kind of a different angle on that. And so we see these things really fitting together beautifully. And so the strategies of being page is this idea we looked at what does it look like to be an amazing teacher? And then we said, well, why should we limit to that? What does it look like to be an amazing person? You know, to be somebody that just communicates well with the people that are around you, somebody that always is empowering other people, that's using ownership language, that's on a conscious path of personal growth and evolution and interested in feedback and wants to grow and be a better person and doesn't take things personally and understands you know, how to communicate and give other people feedback what does that look like? And we called that strategies and foundations of being. And so we looked at Tony Robbins and we looked a lot at Eckhart Tolle and we looked at all the education programs that are out there. We studied all of the alternative education programs, like I said, Montessori, Waldorf, Regio, Bloom's Taxonomy, um, the, the uh, multi-intelligences, all these different things, ORF. We studied all these and we said, okay, what do they have to say about teaching? And then we said, well, what does Tony Robbins have to say about motivation? You know, what does Eckhart Tolle have to say about consciousness? What does uh, Miguel Ruiz have to say about uh, living a happy life? And what do these have in common with all these other amazing books that are out there? And we brought all that together with hundreds of hours of research that was done on all these different education systems and everything, and we created our foundational strategies of being page. And so, like I said, it took uh, 10 hours just to build them, just to build, just to take what we did and turn it into a web page. And now we're super excited to put it out there to the public uh, probably tonight. Yeah, probably tonight. I'm going to put that out, but it's up on the website. We're just going to publish it and publicize it and say, hey, we want feedback on this. Like, Give us your ideas because it's meant to be um, non-dogmatic, non-ideological. It's meant to be really empowering and something usable for everybody. And so we want to make sure that it lands well. I want to make sure that it really is for the highest good of all and that it's got it's understandable and it's a useful tool. And then we'll, we're, we've been using the basic foundations of these and tenets of these as an organization now for years because a lot of it's taught in our consensus trainings and we have regular meetings and everything that we do. But we want to continue to refine this process and make it even better, you know, just keep improving it. So we're crazy excited to put that out to the world and to share it with people and see what people think and take that those ideas and any questions that people have so we can make the frequently asked questions page at the bo uh, section at the bottom better and better. And so um, that was the other major, major thing that we got done this week. And um, I think that's it. I already talked about the methodology page being updated. And so there you have it. That's what we've accomplished in the past week. So um, yeah, with that, as always, I'd like to say thank you to everybody. Uh, we still continue to seek major funding you know, if anybody would like to help us find major funding, share our funding page, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash funding, that to get the property, if somebody would invest in our organization, help us get the property off the market, the property that we've worked three years on establishing a relationship around. We built an entire business plan around. It's designed to share one community, throw the doors wide, and invite thousands and thousands of people to come and visit and experience and participate in everything that we're creating and everything that I'm talking about and then take those open source blueprints out and duplicate them. This is how we're reinventing the world. This is how we're reinventing the world. The idea, the foundational idea below all of it and the idea of creating open source blueprints and giving all this away is to get the mainstream public involved, to give, get the developed nations of the world and the people with the money to build sustainable infrastructure, to start building sustainable infrastructure all over the world and demonstrate and create 
open source teacher demonstration hubs, or maybe not even just to create sustainable villages. They don't have to be modeled after ours. They could just use the blueprints to set them up and to spread sustainable infrastructure and to get mainstream uh, the mainstream mindset behind this idea of thinking about it, focusing on it, and evolving it and growing it to make it exciting. You know, it's like the idea of a cell phone. You know, the first cell phone when it came out, it's like, okay, here's a cell phone. This is a really cool idea, but not a lot of people had it. And then as more and more people, as the market just glommed onto the cell phone idea and wanted it, you know, all this money investment goes into the idea of making a better cell phone, a better computer, a better automobile, a better anything. That's what we want to do. If the mainstream public is interested, then industry will follow. And so we're giving away everything that's necessary to make it easy for the mainstream public because that's a big part that we see for making it interesting to the mainstream public, to make it as affordable as possible, to show people that they can live a better life. But what we really need help with is obviously funding. Right now we still cannot share the location of our property because it's, it's on the market. Until we take it off the market, we can't put it out there. And so we really, really, really uh, obviously are seeking that that investor, either an angel investor or just an investor to help us get off that, get us off the market, which will allow us to build our team faster, allow us to run a Kickstarter campaign and share the details of that property and, um, and move forward at an exponentially faster rate. So we've got the infrastructure in place now for doing that, continuing to keep the, pro the project on track. And so that's the big deal. If anybody would like to help us out, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash funding, share that page, share it, like it. Uh, and get help us get the word out. That would be the biggest thing that people could do right now is um, helping with exposure of that page specifically and getting in the right hands, the right person sees what it is that we're doing, wants to be a part of it uh, from the financial perspective. So other than that, follow us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash one community fans. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash one community org. Follow us on YouTube, uh, just Google one community or YouTube one community and you'll see all of our different things. We've got a couple different channels there, One Community Org and also uh, One Community, One Future, the word One Community, and then the number One Future. And so you can see that as well. Those are our YouTube channels. And uh, thanks for all the love and support. We definitely appreciate it. Emails that we get, the likes, the positive comments that we get on these videos, watching me talk for 30 minutes and hearing what it is. It's, uh, it's nice to see that people are interested. So as always, thank you very much. Have a beautiful week, and we'll report in next week with our progress as it continues to move forward.